All right, welcome back. Now, let's work on winning and losing, and let's get a better background going on in here. So first, we'll start with the background. Just click on Stage over here, and it will take you to. Um, you can control the stage just like you can control sprites. So if we go up here to Backdrops, we can click Choose from Library. And I like neon tunnels, so that's what I'm going to use, but you can use whatever you want. I'm going to put that in, and I'm going to delete backdrop one because I don't want it. So if I click on it, there's a little X there. Just make that go away. So now I have neon tunnel. And now, uh, since we're going to add winning and losing, um, we want to tell the user if which uh, player has won and which player has lost. So we're actually going to right click on this and duplicate it twice or actually just once first sorry duplicate it once so now this will be our general when we start playing background and this let's make this if the player one wins so let's go over here and we'll grab click on the T the big text tool and click anywhere in here and type player one wins and then we will highlight the text we just made. Let's make it a better color so we can see it. I'm going to click on this green down here. And I'm going to change the font from Helvetica to Scratch. Now it's a little small, so we want to make that bigger. So let's click on the Select button up here this arrow. Now click on the text and now just drag it from the corner and make it bigger. And you can drag it over and you can leave it like this. I actually I want to make it two lines. So I'm going to click back on the text tool. Click for wins and hit enter and then give it a few spaces to try and center it. That looks good enough. Now click back on the arrow and drag it to the middle and you can make it a little bigger if you want it is entirely up to you so there this is the screen that will display if player one wins once we set it to do so now let's right click on this layer and duplicate so now we have two of these so we're going to come over here we're going to click on the text tool Change player one to player two. And now we have the player one wins and player two wins backgrounds. Now, to make the code make a little more sense when we're running it, let's actually change the name of these. And when you're on any of these backdrops, if you look at this white box here, we can highlight and make that whatever we want it to be. So I'm going to make it P2 win for player 2 win. And I'm going to go to this one and do the same thing and make it P1 win. You can call these whatever you want. Just make sure you remember what you call them. And Neon Tunnel is fine. That one can stay. So now if we go into Ball um, and click on Script, we want to make sure that every time uh, this code starts running that the neon tunnel background displays without any of this text. Now you could control the backdrop in uh, in here. You can draw in an event and you can say uh, when it starts, switch to backdrop uh, whatever. But since we're going to control um, changing to player one wins and player two wins backdrops in the ball script, we're just going to control all of the backdrops from the ball script so we're not jumping back and forth trying to figure out where we change the backdrop so while we're in in the ball and we're in looks if we click on switch backdrop to whatever and we'll take that out and drag it right to the top and we're going to change it from p2 win to neon tunnel so now this is telling the program 
every time it starts, switch to the neon tunnel backdrop. Um, and then, now we have to control when the player wins and loses, how are we going to switch to the other uh, two backdrops. So now these if blocks are going to get slightly more complicated. So let's grab a control and let's go, let's grab an if else. Now this is something we haven't used before. So let's grab it and stick it in. Uh, let's put it right under change player one. So now it has broadcast start automatically popped into the first uh, section of the if block. That's okay. That's where we want it. Now I'm going to set the score limit to 10, but you can set it to whatever you want. So I'm going to grab operators and I'm going to grab a less than block and stick it in there. And I'm going to make the right side 10. And then the left side, I want to be the player score, the player one score for this block here. So I'll go data, player one, drop it in there. So now we're saying every time the ball um, goes too far to the left, give player one a point. And then if player 10 or player one, the value of player one is less than 10, then broadcast start and we'll run this block of code again. But if player one is 10 or greater, the way we're adding up scores, it won't get greater. It'll max out at 10. Um, but once we reach that value, then we want to end this game and we want to switch the backdrop to player one wins. So let's switch the backdrop first. So let's go to looks and change, switch to backdrop, stick that in the else part and make it P1 win or whatever you named the player one winning. Now we're also gonna use another event to try and make things look slightly better when the game ends. Now we're going to use this event to stop all of the sprites from doing anything. When the game ends, that's it. Everything stops. So we're going to go events. We're going to broadcast event. Stick it in under the switch backdrop. And if we click the arrow, we can make a new message. And we'll call this one game over enter so now we haven't uh, we haven't given anything told anything to listen for game over yet but we will in a second first let's go to the second block and do the exact same thing so let's go control if else and stick it just under player two so the broadcast start stays in the top. And then we'll grab a less than block, stick it in there, and we'll put 10. And we'll go to data and grab player two for this one. So now if player two's score is less than 10, then just broadcast start and keep going through this loop. Else, if it's not less than 10, then switch backdrop so looks uh switch oops switch to backdrop and p2 win and also broadcast game over so events broadcast game over so let the we're going to let all the sprites know that the game has ended with this broadcast. So now the first thing we want to stop is the ball. We don't want it to keep bouncing after the game has been won. So we'll grab when I receive and just stick it wherever it'll fit and change it to game over. And now we can go into control and right over here we have stop all. Just drag that out there. The other options are this script, all, or other scripts in this sprite. 
So what this is saying is if we have multiple blocks of code running, we could stop all of the blocks of code for this particular sprite, um, or we could stop all of the scripts except for the one that we're in for this sprite. And for our purposes, we're just going to go stop all. So everything that the ball is doing just stops. And then we're going to go into paddle and do the same thing. So event when I receive game over, control, stop all. And opponent event when I receive game over control stop all so this will just stop all of the sprites from doing anything once the game has been won and just to kind of clean this up a little just right click clean up and I'll just organize your stuff and make it look a little bit neater and do that for all three if you want I like to try and keep the code looking as neat as possible and I think that's about it for this one. I will see you in the next video.